For RCR Wireless News, I'm Sean Kinney, joined here at Mobile World Congress by Jim Gillette of Nokia to learn a little bit more about how some of the big industry trends we're seeing are affecting backhaul. Yes. So Jim, uh, to get started, give us sort of a look at where backhaul is right now. Sure. Well, it's a, it's a fairly static connection. Uh, it's a simple job, really. Uh, we connect the radio sites to the packet core, and traditionally, uh, that connection, once established, stayed in place. Uh, in the old days, it was with E1s and T1s. Now it's predominantly IP over Ethernet. Um, but the connection, once established, stays put. You might increase the bandwidth a bit when the cell site adds more uh, carriers. And of course, more cell sites are added, so you have to add more connections. But by and large, it's a fairly stable connection once it's put up. And I mentioned some of these major trends that are shaping the space. Yeah. 5G, obviously, one of them. So how do you see 5G impacting backhaul? Right. Well, what's happening at the mobile layer, which is our client, that's our job, is to, is to move that mobile equipment and get their traffic where it needs to be. One of the first things we're seeing is the centralization of the baseband unit. Um, and that's being driven largely because doing so allows you to control many radios uh, and get better cell edge performance. Um, the, uh, the challenge to us, of course, then is we have to carry SIPRI traffic, um, which is not a particularly uh, good protocol. Uh, the traffic tends to be steady state, uh, even if there's no one in the cell site. Yeah, but SIPRI is something that I've heard a lot about here at Mobile World Congress, and I know it really is affecting transport. Can you expound on that a little bit? Well, one of the things uh, you have to realize about SIPRI is it's about a 15-year-old standard, and originally came into play when people decided that in a cell site, it would be more efficient to take the radio and put it up at the top of the mast. And SIPRI was the standard then that would connect that radio back down to the cabinet in the base. Um, when you go to this centralized RAN or even cloud RAN and you start to centralize the baseband units and, and, and pool them, uh, you're, you're, you're taking with you all the legacy attributes of that standard, and one of which is the latency budget that we have in transport to move the packets to the BBU and bring them back is very tight. It's in the order of 200 microseconds. So one of the biggest challenges there is of that 200, it takes five microseconds just to put light through a kilometer of fiber. So your distance you can go is limited to about 15 kilometers, maybe 20. And you know, in the context of the, the path forward to 5G, we are obviously seeing this huge move towards BBU pooling. Yes. And what goes hand in hand with this is, is virtualization. So how is that right. impacting backhaul? Well, there the issue is, uh, you know, operators starting to deploy cloud compute infrastructure throughout their network, right out to the edge. Um, and so applications now, whether they're packet core or even some of the BBU functions, they can be turned up much faster than they ever have before. And the benefit for an operator is they can launch services faster, but also for, say, special events, weekend events, they can relocate certain functions closer to wherever the activity is and deliver a better quality of experience. So let's pull the lens back, and, and from mm. a macro perspective, how do all these fit together? Well, what's going on here is, of course, all these sites, uh, data center and radio sites, they're all interconnected. Uh, there's some physical media in place, whether it's optical or microwave. But, it, but it's a packet network, and riding on top of that is an IP service layer. Um, and that's the part where you have to make sure gets instantiated on the virtual machine wherever these applications uh, turn up. Um, and this is where software-defined networks comes in. So, Jim, you know, uh, as you help your operator clients and partners really evolve their networks yes. and continuously try to improve that user experience, yep. what's the edge that Nokia brings to the market? Yeah. yeah. Well, what, what we bring is the idea that we look at this, uh, this not just as front hall or back, we, we look at the whole end to end as a, as a one architecture, uh, which we're calling any hall for simplicity. Um, and as, as a single architecture, what we can bring is expertise in all the different technology sets, whether it's microwave, IP, optical, uh, PON, even in-band millimeter wave uh, mobile backhauling. So we can, we can build you a single architecture drawing on whatever attributes you need from these technologies, uh, and that's a, a, that's a differentiator for us. 
Jim, you mentioned millimeter wave backhaul. Mm. Uh, obviously, millimeter wave has huge potential and is sure. just going to get more important for the telecom industry. Yes. What are some of the challenges with using millimeter <laughs> wave effectively? Sure. Well, obviously, the upside is the frequency 30 or more gigahertz gives you incredible bandwidth to deliver a 5G experience. The downside is that spectrum doesn't have very good propagation characteristics, so the cells tend to be very small. So we're talking possibly 100 meters in size. So they're going to be a lot smaller, a lot denser, which is going to create a lot more interference. Okay, so the need for this centralized baseband processor to better coordinate the interference, absolutely key. Now, that said, there's so much bandwidth available at those frequencies, you can actually carve out some of it and use that spectrum to do the backhauling up to a central site or a hub where perhaps you have a fiber connection. The trick then is having some sort of overarching you know, cloud-based spectrum manager that is sensing the condition at each of these millimeter cells and is allocating correctly what path the backhaul traffic should take. So in the context of the ultimate commercialization of 5G, obviously right. won't be like turning on a light switch, but in those early days, do you foresee deployments around uh, fixed 5G, harnessing the millimeter waves, and then later on the mobile use of millimeter waves? Now, I'm not sure I can comment per se on the specific sequence, but, but what you are touching on, which is key, is what other ways can we monetize this radio spectrum? Uh, and for instance, uh, one of the things we're doing uh, with our partner AT&T in the United States is we're working with them to partition some of their LTE spectrum to deliver uh, the smart grid to electrical utilities. So again, you know, whether it's ourselves or, or operators, everyone knows that spectrum's a valuable asset and finding new ways to generate money from it through new services, that's absolutely the way to go. Jim, I appreciate you joining us at Mobile World Congress and sharing Nokia's perspective. Don, it's my pleasure. Thank you.